so the dermal tissue can regenerate. But as well as that, in the dermis you have sweat glands, and going deeper down into the dermis you have hair follicles. And the sweat glands, and especially the hair follicles, are lined with epidermal cells. So it's as if the epidermis dips way, way down in the hair follicles, which of course go down into the dermis, and, and deep in the dermis, and even, even slightly below the dermis, that they are deep structures. And these hair follicles are lined with epidermal keratinocytes, the same cells that form the surface layer of the skin. And after an injury, there'll be mitosis in these deep preserved keratinocytes, and they will migrate back up to the surface of the wound. And as long as you can maintain a moist wound environment, the epidermal keratinocytes can migrate over the surface of the wound, meaning that you'll get regeneration of the epidermis. The epidermis will be replaced with new epidermis. And because it's the epidermis that gives the cosmetic results on the surface of the skin, you can get perfect cosmetic results because the epidermis has regenerated. The next classification of partial thickness burns are deep partial thickness burns. These are often called uh, deep dermal burns as well. And the burns extend down into the lower half of the dermis. And they can have very variable um, appearances. They might appear red or they might appear white. And uh, some have mottled red and white areas. But after a while, they won't blanch because many of the dermal capillaries have been lost. Actually, an acute deep dermal burn may, but after a while, after 24 hours or so, um, it, won't, it won't blanch because the capillaries are no longer intact. The, the, the capillaries have been necrosed with the rest of the tissue. Like the more superficial burns, there can be a lot of inflammatory swelling and tissue loss. And actually, because very often a lot of the nociceptors in the upper part of the dermis have been burnt away, these burns can be less painful. So the more superficial partial thickness burns are more painful than the deep partial thickness burns because the deep partial thickness burns, the nociceptors are simply burnt away and they're not there anymore. Now these burns are difficult to heal. They can take many weeks to heal up because there's more dermis to regenerate and the epidermal type keratinocytes, the, the, the sort of cells that form the epidermis, they can be preserved, but only in some of the very deep structures. So there's less of them left. There's less, less epidermal cells left to migrate up to the surface because more of them have been destroyed. So epidermal regeneration can be, can be slow. And in, in some areas, it can be hardly present at all, actually. And these wounds heal by, uh, there's a lot of granulation tissue and uh, fibrous uh, scars can develop. Infections are a common complication that can further delay healing as well. And because of all these problems, most burns units, if they have the option to do so, will surgically remove the necrotic superficial tissue. They will surgically debride it uh, and then use skin grafting to close the wounds. And if that's done, that's associated with a much better prognosis and, and way less likelihood of uh, infection developing. Now the final classification of burns are, are full thickness burns, sometimes called third degree burns. And full thickness burns, as the name suggests, all of the thickness of the skin will be necrosed. So the epidermis and the dermis will be lost, and these wounds can even go down to underlying subcutaneous tissues. But the full thickness of the skin is lost. And that means all of the potentially regenerative elements of the dermis and the epidermis are gone. The burnt tissue undergoes coagulative necrosis and it forms just a layer of dead tissue called an S-scar. An S-scar is just this layer of dead skin. The skin's all been killed. It's all necrosed. And this is a very significant infection risk. So in burns units, they will surgically remove the S-scar and use skin grafting. If the eschar is not surgically removed, it will probably fall off in two to three weeks anyway. But as I say, there's a very high infection risk associated with this dead tissue. 
And uh, full thickness injuries can appear white, sometimes they're black and charred or brown and leathery. And of course they don't blanch with pressure because all of the blood vessels in the dermis have been destroyed. Full thickness burns are way less painful than partial thickness burns because all of the dermal sensory receptors have simply been burnt away. They're not there anymore. Of course, there can be very uh, painful areas around about the outside of the burn. But in the full thickness area, the, the skin is insensitive to touch. The, the skin is dead. The skin doesn't feel pain anymore. But as I say, there can be pain from surrounding areas of partial thickness injuries. And because all of the dermis and epidermis have, is lost, the opportunity for um, tissue regeneration in full thickness burns is very limited. And as a result, these burns can only regenerate very slowly from intact skin around about the outside of the burn. And without intervention, they'll heal by granulation and fibrosis, leaving deformity and, and massive scar formation which will give very poor cosmetic and functional results. And over time as well, the scars contract, which makes it even less, uh, e even, even worse cosmetic results and even less functionality. So if at all possible, Burns units will um, take away the dead skin and apply skin grafting. And that's, uh, that, that's associated with, with a good recovery rate if it's well done. Now as well, in, uh, as, well as assessing the classification, the thickness of a burn, it's also very important to assess the percentage of the body surface area which has been burned. This is important for prognostic reasons and it's important for calculating fluid replacement. And uh, there are charts that can do this quite accurately. And if you're working with children, it's, it's quite important to use these charts so that you can work out the percentage surface area. But with adults, there's, there's a nice, quick, ready reckoning way to do it. It's a bit approximate, but it's quite a useful rule to know about. And it's called the rule of nines. And uh, what this means is that the head is 9% of the body surface area, and arms are 9% of the body surface area each. The front of a leg is 9%, and the back of a leg is 9%. In other words, the whole leg is 18%. The front of the torso is 18%, so half of the torso is 9%, and the back and the buttocks are also 18%, so half of that area would also represent 9%. So it's all 9, so it's kind of easy to remember. And another rough and ready way of reckoning the surface area of a burn is looking at the size of the patient's palm. And the size of the patient's palm is usually about 1% of body surface area. Usually about 1% of body surface area about 1% of body surface area. Let's think now about the first aid principles that we can apply in burns. And it's very important to know about because early first aid interventions in burns can significantly improve the patient's prognosis. Now in any first aid situation, of course, we're looking at A, B, C first. Airway, breathing and circulation. The patient must have a patent airway, they must be breathing, and the circulatory system must be functioning. If these aren't working, we attend to these first. Then probably the next thing to say about burn injuries is that the patient might be in a smoky environment. And we want to get the patient out of that smoky environment. We don't want the patient to be inhaling smoke or very hot air or hot gases because there's a risk of inhalation injury. Hot air and hot gases being breathed into the lungs can damage the airways and can damage the lower parts of the lungs. So get the patient to some fresh air as quickly as possible. Then the next priority is that any burning should be extinguished. We need to halt the burning process. If the patient's on fire, we need to smother the flames. Think about what's making the heat and take that away from the patient. Clothes can remain hot for quite some time after a fire has been extinguished and can carry on burning the patient. So take those off. Stop that heat being conducted into the patient's body. Scalding water. Again, the hot water will sit on the clothes and the clothes are in contact with the patient's body. 
So again, get the clothes off and stop the transfer of heat. 